I am ready to go into space again. But not as a Master Chief, but as a Samus and or as a Metroid. Hello there, everybody. This is Siwa Platinum, and today we're going to tackle Metroid Dread. Funnily enough, even though in the timeline this takes place at the very end, this was my very first Metroid game. And honestly, I'm so glad it was because this one is just absolutely wonderful. This game is just so, so good. And uh, if you hadn't played this yet, then please do. Because there is a demo out there on the eShop for you to try out if you're so very curious. But anyway... Yes, so I'm going to be going ahead and uh, doing absolutely everything in Metroid Dread. Again, going to be a short journey, but we'll see how fast I can do it according to the video game and also how good I can hopefully get with this game. And actually, um, I waited a little bit on this. I actually waited a little bit on this to actually play fully because... Funnily enough, Metroid Dread actually got some updates adding new modes and new difficulties that I'll show off. So that's why I held off a little bit. That's why I sort of said I knew it in that direct reaction where, you know, we saw that Metroid Dread was getting updates and everything. So, yeah, um, should be a fun, fun, fun time. And of course, I'm going to be playing on hard mode and not dread mode because, <laughs> well, I'll talk about hard, I'll talk about dread mode as we go along here, but let's get started with Let's Play Metroid Dread. Metroid. A virulent floating organism that drained energy from its prey through physical contact. Metroids were originally created by the Chozo and named after their word for Ultimate Warrior. Their value as a bioweapon sparked several crises, and as a result, all traces of them have been eliminated. They are now extinct. X Parasite. A gelatinous, parasitic organism indigenous to the planet SR388. It could absorb the DNA of its host, leave living or dead, and replicate its form. When infecting a living host, it could even access the host's memories. Ex-parasites were driven not by emotion, but by an instinctive need to replicate and spread to increasingly stronger hosts. Their inability to be controlled marked them as an even more dangerous than their sole predator, the Metroids. Like the Metroids, they are believed extinct. With no Metroids surviving on SR-388, it became infested with the X, horrifying parasites capable of imitating any living being. Unaware of this, I set foot on the planet, got infected, and almost died. The only thing that saved me was a vaccine created from Metroid DNA which also left me uniquely able to oppose the X. This ability was tested immediately when I went to a Biologic Space Laboratories, or BSL, research station to investigate a distress signal. There, I battled many X forms, including the SAX, which was the X mimicking me in my power suit at full strength. I eventually eliminated the X menace on SR-388 and by setting the BSL station to a, on a collision course to the planet. After that, the X and the Metroids were just memories, or so we thought. Just when it all seemed over, 
the Galactic Federation received a mysterious video transmission. As they always do. It showed an X, alive and, and in the wild. Through analysis that proved the video was real. Although the sender was unknown, the transmission was traced to a particular planet. Clearly, I meant to say thorough there, but, you know, I can't talk. It was called ZDR. If the X had somehow escaped the extinction out there, they would pose a threat to the entire galaxy. The Galactic Federation dispatched a research team of seven Emmy to investigate. And Emmy is a large research robot designed to capture field samples and extract their DNA. Their incredible mobility and protective plating, made of the strongest stuff in the universe, vibranium, particularly granted, practically granted the, guaranteed the mission's success. But not, long, but not long after their arrival on ZDR, all communication was lost. Because, you know, of course it was. I'm the only one who can survive out here. I am the Master Chef, after all. What is happening on ZDR? Is the planet really infested with X? As the only one immune to the parasites, it's up to me to go there and find out. The bounty for this mission does not seem appropriate. The risk clearly outweighs the reward.
and that's how I lost my shit for the 30th time. <laughs> yep. As tradition in all the Metroids, Samus loses her powers. Again. She really needs to find a new career. Other than just bounty hunting. Anyway, movement in this game is amazing. This feels so good to control. So good to aim with the L button. So good to shoot as many times as you want with the Y button like this. Like, I am just... When I first con when I first gained control of Samus, I was like, yes, this is it. This is it. This is the Metroid that I want to personally beat. And yeah, if you don't know, yes, this is a see uh, about the story that's happening so far. I know this is the sequel to Metroid Fusion, which I played, by the way. <laughs> like after Dread, I was like, yeah, no, I want to get into this series. I want to be all like, yeah, let's do this. Let's. Let me play uh, Super, Fusion, and whatever. Uploading data. So, you've accessed a network station. Well done, Samus. I have reviewed your vital signs and video log from the data you uploaded. I've run a full analysis, but I cannot account for why you lost consciousness. My readings indicate dramatic physical changes in you. Whatever caused these changes seems to have stripped you of most abilities. You might call it physical amnesia. Yeah, much better than, you know, having your abilities ripped out of you by freaking things on Talon 4, I would probably have to say. That brings me to your assailant. I am checking the Federation database against your video log. It appears to have been a Chozo. The attacker's identity is not yet clear. I have determined that you are somewhere within the depths of ZDR. Your top priority should be to return to your ship on the surface. This situation is precarious. Trust your instincts as you navigate upward. This planet appears to consist of multiple areas, shuttles, elevators, and other modes of transport connect them. Keep an eye out for ways to reach the surface. The ship's location is marked on your global map. Check it for yourself. You may encounter pockets of low temperature. Your Metroid DNA renders you vulnerable to such environments. Spending time in cold areas will be harmful to you. There are many such cold areas scattered underground. Do not enter them with your basic power suit. One final thing. Underground interference is preventing radio transmissions. Check in with me at any network stations you find. Always gotta make sure to save our progress after after our good old friend Adam tells us to do the thing that we were already going to do. So yeah, we are in the region of our Artaria right now. I almost, you know what, I read that as Altaria, but you know, I'm not playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, am I right? As much as I would like to. But, very clearly, your ship is right there at the very top of the map. And it's our job and our, you know, prerogative to get out of here. So, as I was saying before, yeah. I played... I played I played the Fusion. I played the Super Metroid. I played the uh, Zero Mission. And I've also played this game where you counter. Yeah, straight out of Samus Returns comes the parry. As, basically, the developers of this game made the 3DS remake Metroid Samus Returns. They return for this game, and the parry is right there. When an enemy flashes like, well, not really like that, like I'm doing right now. But when, when these bird enemies come over there and flash you, that's your cue to basically press the X button to parry that, and you'll get more recovery and missiles that way. And in order to shoot missiles, by the way, uh, press X while running to do a powerful dash melee. Unlike other melee counters, the, the dash melee will damage the enemy. Of course it will. Yes, it will. And uh, right over here on this map, if you see something, if, a, if an area on the map is blinking, it indicates that a hidden item is there. So yeah, be sure to check the map. Especially after you get more weapons. 
like these upgradable missile tanks. Thing. This Emmy be out of control. So we gotta shoot the door in order to get out of here. You can wall jump like this in order to get to safety. We're getting out of here. You know, little, little cute butter, little cute uh, space butterflies. I like the cute little space butterflies. Cute space butterflies gives me power, and the power is the Omega Cannon. Not like the one from Prime Hunters, mind you, but it's an entirely different one. You hold L to aim, hold R to charge it up, and once it's all charged up, you fire with the Y button. And this is basically your only weapon against these things. Ooh, baby! Ooh, I, I don't, I don't think I've actually. <laughs> oh my god, I don't think I've ever actually parried that before. That's, that's awesome. And I've done like multiple runs before, where I usually just end up like destroying it. I totally forgot the dude came out of there. <laughs> oh man, that was good. Once you use up the Omega Cannon to destroy an enemy, then it reverts back to the regular cannon. So, that was good. Anyway. Yes, like, oh my god. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Parrying those things is really hard to do. But, it feels so satisfying when you do. Also, taking the new power suit, Sam, is like, wow, look at you. You look great in blue. That's never really been a thing before, but that's awesome. Kind of reminds me of the fusion suit a little bit. But anyway. Um, yeah, so... Right over here is something cool. Look at this big old door. We enter into the void. It's been a long time since I've actually seen these cutscenes, by the way. <laughs> I usually just end up skipping them because I just want to clear this as fast as I can. But now we're in a grainy sort of area. Spooky. Let's see what we can find. Death Robot. No use for it, just run. No use for it, just run, run, run. So unlike that, unlike that one, this one obviously is more dangerous. As you clearly saw in the cutscene, we can't really do anything to it. So we have no choice but to run and get the heck out of there. I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna shoot you. you can't do nothing. <laughs> He's like, you can't do nothing. Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I just noticed something I never noticed before. Like, jeez. This game is all about the video game, isn't it? It really should be at this point. Get those guys from the ceiling. And then we open up that door. And let's talk to our good old friend, Adam. Uploading data. 
so heavy you encountered were clearly trying to capture you, they may have been hacked. If so, it's reasonable to assume all Emmy will be hostile. Emmy sent out a pulse to detect vibrations in the air within a certain range. Essentially, they can hear you. Upon detecting vibrations, an Emmy enters surveillance mode to track their source. Stay out of its line of sight when this happens. Otherwise, the danger to you increases dramatically. An Emmy that has seen you will begin pursuit. Part of the pursuit protocol is to seal the Emmy's own exits. You will be trapped inside. To survive, you must leave its range of pursuit. Evade the Emmy and it will disengage. This will also unseal the exits. An Emmy never leaves its assigned zone. Their control system must permit them to operate only within that range. I estimate a 99% probability of death if an Emmy captures you. There may be a very small opportunity to escape, but exploiting this window will be virtually impossible. The Emmy are immune to your current weapons. You lack the unique energy used to defeat the first Emmy. Your only option now is to evade capture and find an exit. Your highest priority in an Emmy zone should be simply to survive. Thank you, Adam, for telling me about the thing that I was already going to do, except I already exploited that 1% chance. So, ha, ah, joke's on you. And now that we've actually seen them, allow me to introduce the Amiibo. Metroid Dread has two Amiibos connected to it. They are pictured on screen right now. Samus in the regular suit, in her regular power suit, and an Emmy. If you use these, Scan Metroid, Metroid related amiibo, aka Samus, Ridley, Emmy, that Metroid amiibo that you got from Samus Returns, to give Samus extra resources or to replenish a random amount of energy or missiles. You can scan each amiibo once per day to replenish the resources. Now I'm going to put the uh, Samus amiibo right here, and you'll get an extra energy tank. So basically in Metroid you have 99 you have 99 health and finding an extra will gain an extra 99 health. And I'm putting the Emmy on right here. And you get an extra missile plus tank. That way your missile capacity will increase by 10. Now uh before you scream pay to win, no. Metroid Dread is a really hard game. Like even for someone, like, relatively new to the series, like, like I am, or I was, yeah, it's a pretty hard game, especially on hard mode, which I'm playing right now, and trust me, you're going to need all the help that you can get. Those amiibo aren't needed for 100% anyway, for 100% completion when it comes to getting all the missile tanks, missile plus tanks, and energy tanks, and whatever. But, oh jeez, but they are very helpful, and you know what? Any help is welcome. And uh, keep in mind, keep in mind that um, you can only get the uh, extra energy tank and missile plus tank um, when you scan the Metroid Dread amiibo. Any other Samus amiibo or Ridley amiibo or whatever won't really work in that sense. Anyway, if you get lost, remember to shoot things, because you never know when you're what you're going to uncover when you're shooting things. It could even lead to it can even lead to absolute safety. Just like that. <laughs> Literally just like that. But anyway, um as now for my story with Metroid, like this was this was definitely like a game series that I felt like kinda sort of intimidated by if that makes any sense this is a safe room by the way um i was actually kind of intimidated by playing like a metroid game because like i always if there's one thing that i always always don't like in games where you have to navigate through stuff it's getting lost and uh, i've certainly gotten lost on a fair few amount of occasions where i didn't know you had to shoot the things in order to in order to move on or you know, do other such things like that. You know, because I never really, because I never really like played any of the games like thoroughly before. So that was a bit of an unfortunate thing for me, but 
Very thankfully, I pushed through, and Metroid Dread became one of my favorite games on the Switch. And I'm really glad it exists now, because people have been talking about this game for a very long time. And they're, they were really happy that uh, this game is finally out. And I certainly thought it was sick the first time it got announced. And, uh, yeah. It's really, really fun. And again, there's a demo out there if you really want to try it out for yourself. Yeah, very thankfully, Metroid Dread got me, got me into the series, so... That's when I played Fusion, and then Super, and then Zero Mission. I still have plenty of the series to go, by the way, but, you know, I basically know about all the games at that point. And, uh, if, and contrary to what you might think of the footage, because, again, I can't really do 60 frames per second footage, at least for 1080p 60 frames per second footage right now. Yeah, this game runs at a beautiful 60 frames per second, so... Yeah, you're going to see very smooth gameplay. You're going to see very smooth gameplay when you play it for yourself. Anyway, we got a missile, another missile tank right there. Any items that you get will be, will be well, marked on the screen like so. And if it says acquired, then congratulations. You've gotten that item right away. So all that's very well and good. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, I still get a little bit, uh, I, I might still get a little bit turned around, if that makes any sense. I'm going to try to get through the game as fast as I can. Obviously, this won't be one of my better runs. Obviously, this won't be one of my better runs of Metroid Dread, because I'm, I'm trying to explain as I explain how to play as, as I'm just playing the game. But I'm also trying to do it as fast as I can, and I want to make sure that I slow down things for you. I still want to get through the game pretty quickly. But I'm not going to miss an opportunity to explain something. If that makes any sense. Anyway, step on this thing right here while an enemy's chasing y'all. And try to get it around before the enemy gets you over this way and then slide down here you can slide with the ZR button by the way anywho come up to one of these and you'll be able to recharge your energy there are plenty of these statues around the area and they're clearly marked energy recharge stat station that way you'll be able to recharge up your energy absolutely no problem whatsoever and uh, if you see cold mist right here, that means you are going to be entering a cold area. There, that also is seen on the map here. Cold areas, since Samus at this point in the story has Metroid DNA within her, yeah, she can't survive at least for now. So she's going to need a different. She's going to need some optimizations right there. And we get our first ever upgrade in this game, the Charge Beam. Charge Beam is basically what it sounds like. You hold Y, you hold the y button to charge, and then release to fire. They basically have the same strength as missiles, basically. If you want out of missiles, then you'll definitely... Then you'll definitely be more than welcome to shoot a Charge Beam shot. So yeah, not only is uh door not only are doors marked right here, but also charge beam doors are also marked as well. And look at that, we're back to where we started. So yeah, um whenever you get a new upgrade, just consult the map and absolutely make sure absolutely make sure that you can that you do new things with your crazy new abilities. Just absolutely make sure of that. Right here is an energy tank. We get another one. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Basic stuff, basic stuff. Now, again, consulting the map, obviously. Again, just try to make sure, just try to make sure that you uh, can do new things with your crazy, with your crazy new abilities. 
like right here you have a charge beam door that you can finally enter so thankfully you can mark this location on a map with a marker and yeah that mark that mark that marker will clearly show on the map just like so so just in case there's like an item that you missed or anything of this or anything like that then you'll be able to easily get to that place well not really easily but you know you'll be able to navigate them good enough i suppose anyway we're gonna save our progress here and then we're gonna be done so i will see you guys for part two of metroid dread see you guys next time